I think that we need uh, to guarantee that every American has affordable and quality health care. Every other country in the world does it. We have to find an American way to do it. But we need to make sure that people aren't going bankrupt. 50% of our bankruptcies in this country are caused by health care crises. So we have to have a system in place where uh, that doesn't happen. And uh, we have to make sure, right now we have 47 million people who are uninsured, and it ends up costing us more money. Because when they get sick, they sometimes don't get checkups, and they put things off, and the outcomes end up much worse. And then they do go to the emergency room, which costs more. There's, uh, we need real health care reform in, in this country, and I believe that under President Obama, and if he has a big enough... Uh, uh, working majority in the U.S. Senate, including a Democratic, another Democratic senator from Minnesota, that we're going to get it. So you mentioned that we need to find an American way to do that. Tell us a little bit more what that would look like, Al. Well, I think that you know there are other countries that have literally have socialized medicine, like Great Britain. I don't think that probably works as an American model. I think that probably we're going to have some mixture of uh, public and private uh, insurance. And, but this will probably will entail uh, some regulation of the insurance industry and of the pharmaceutical industries. So I'll give you one example. Uh, on Medicare Part D, the, uh, th that's how seniors uh, get their, their uh, prescription drugs through Medicare. Well, the pharmaceutical companies donated so much money to mainly Republican office holders, including Norm Coleman, who's gotten more from uh, the pharmaceutical industry than any politician in the history of Minnesota history, that he voted to prohibit Medicare from negotiating with the pharmaceuticals on the cost of, of drugs for our seniors. That costs our seniors billions of dollars a year. It costs taxpayers three times that much because we pay for 75 percent of it. It also has human tragedies. I talked to a nurse who uh, worked in the ICU unit in Cambridge, Minnesota, and she said that when seniors would hit their donut hole, and this is a you know, after you spend a, a, a got a certain amount of your drugs through uh, Medicare Part D, you hit a donut hole and had to pay for them yourself. When seniors would hit their donut hole, they'd end up in her ICU unit because they weren't couldn't afford to buy their drugs. And this costs our health care system even more. So this is a, this is a case where there was really no reason not to uh, have Medicare negotiate with the pharmaceutical companies like they do in the VA. In the VA, uh, they use their size to negotiate with the pharmaceutical companies, and as a result, they pay 44% less for the same drugs that seniors get through Medicare Part D. So what's your position on regulating the food supply? On regulating the food supply, we need a, a lot more inspection. We've had cuts in inspection in, through the FDA, so we need to that, and we ob obviously need to be inspecting stuff that comes in uh, from, um, from overseas. I like the uh, country of origin labeling. I think that's a very helpful thing to be doing. Uh, but we need, we need to inspect meat. We need to, uh, we need to do what we used to do and, and continue doing it. And we need to be, uh, put a, a careful eye on our produce as well. What's your position on global health issues? Well, I think that just in general that our security is enhanced when other countries aren't failing. I also think that our security is enhanced when our standing in the world is enhanced. And traditionally we have played a role in, uh, and the World Health Organization through the UN has played a role in, in health care uh, around the world, especially in countries that are in danger of, of failing. Uh, countries that are in danger of failing are countries that, you know, can breed terrorism, and it's in our national security to make sure that doesn't happen. A, a good example of this is Africa, countries in Africa that have a high rate of, of AIDS. And I think that, you know, on my radio show, I was very critical of President Bush on so many issues. Not on this. I think that he's done uh, a good job in, in funding AIDS treatment in, in Africa. I have some niggling problems with some of the restrictions he's put on it. Uh, there are um, issues there, but, I, but I, I, I think we've done a good job there.
three more questions we've been asking everybody today. When was the last time you washed your hands? I washed my hands like about 10 minutes ago. I, <laughs> I made guacamole over at uh, Tejas, and I thought before handling food that I was making for other people that I should wash my hands. When was the last time you exercised vigorously for 30 minutes? I play uh, squash with a um, one of our field operatives who's Pakistani and I think I played with him last uh, about a week ago so and it's incredibly vigorous. It's I used to play racquetball which I call Neanderthal squash but uh, I love both both games because you get an incredible workout incredibly fast. I mean, you're up, you're up to, you're running. You're just running the whole time. When was the last time you went out of your way to recycle something? Out of my way? I went out of my way here at the fair uh, to uh, compost my corn. Maybe the best thing at the fair is the corn, and I got it, and the composting place is very close to where you get the corn, but we had to go and do an interview somewhere, and I made sure that I went back and composted it. Anything else you'd like to say about public health? Yes. Um, a lot of health is determined not by who your doctor is and not by the kind of insurance you have, but by things, but by socioeconomic determinants. Um, where you live, what kind of ho housing you have. Is there clean air and clean water? Is there, uh, is healthy food available? Um, do the people around, is there a lot of violence, a lot of crime around you? Uh, you know, do you have a place to exercise? Do you have a place to just stroll around and, and, and um, have uh, recreation with, with friends or, or, or socialize with friends? Uh, all these social economic determinants of health are really important. And uh, I don't think we put enough emphasis on them. Um, you know, we have the largest gap now in income and wealth in this country that we've had since the uh, 1920s. And that actually is impacting the cost of our health care. And it also, you know, do people in where you live have mental health problems? Do they have chemical dependency problems? This is why I think that... Uh, healthcare parity in those areas, in mental health and chemical dependency treatment, are so important. So these are things that, that when people talk about healthcare in this country, they don't talk about enough.